Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. And today I am so excited because we have Ordra on, and she is one of the owners and founders of Carmen's Little Leaders. And she works to help children in, and, and work with parents, of course, to help improve their lives and to help them overall understand different ways of communicating, working with their children and helping their children to excel to higher levels where they can really make themselves a really better person. So when they get out into the world, as they get older, they have the tools and techniques that they need to succeed, to excel, and to actually reach their goals so all their dreams can become a reality. And that's what we want for our children. We want the best for our children. So Audra is here to talk about different techniques and different ways that we can install into our children and install into our own selves to help our children reach their, their goals in life and become better people and do the things they always wanted to do. And today she has a great idea. She wants to talk about the learned habits that we install in our children and how they impact their lives. And she's going to talk a little about that and really give us some great advice. So Audra, take it away. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for having us again. And me being here independently, I love um, just connecting with you, Stacy. So thanks again. Love all the, the in insight you provide for us. So great to be here. Yeah, I wanted to take a little bit of a deeper dive. Um, and I think it's relevant for all of us, but I wanted to take a deeper dive into the value of habits. Um, and how that impacts our children. And many parents we are discovering um, not only don't understand the value, but um, they don't know how to make make sure that their children are instilled with habits. And um, as you and I were talking, you know, it's it's an important thing for our, our kids to know how to build those habits. And we as the parents have to be the director, so to speak. Um, and so what does that look like and, and why do we want to do it? So let's think about maybe, I guess, first of why is that important? Um, and there's been numerous studies done and, and books written on the value of habits. And, um, and I think they're they're spot on in the most recent ones and the fact that habits are what really help us um, have control of our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, if you, I think if you reflect back to like the military, we're all somewhat familiar with how the military runs and, and they run on what a tight schedule. Um, so you get up at 6 a.m. every day, you do five minutes of push ups, sit ups, or whatever it might be. And then there is routine and routine and habits help us find balance and control in our life. And, and for some folks that's missing. And, and as parents, we need to only not only exemplify that through our own um, demonstration of us having habits and um, routines, but it, helping our kids at a young age. So when they get up every day, you know, they know they brush their teeth, they get ready for school. And, and those habits really instill a valuable subset, so to speak, um, in how our children grow up. Um, and so when we think about they, and I guess, you know, the point that I, I think is so valuable now is they, the colleges are saying and, and employers are saying so many kids that, and I say kids, meaning 25 year olds now are coming and they're taking longer to graduate, almost an extra year to two years to graduate. Yeah. Um, and then second to that, when they get in the workplace, they seem a little lost um, and they don't have um, that direction that the parent that adults used to have when they entered the workplace and it, and it seems to be happening longer and longer. And so what is important for us to remember is like, how do we start that? And it's a start. we start as young as maybe three, yeah. um, to kind of let them know, Hey, when you, when you get up in the morning, this is how it starts. And, and I personally know for me and maybe Stacy, you're this way as well. Um, is that, you know, I've, find that when I, you know, and I have that schedule, then when hiccups happen in my life, because we all are going to run into um, challenges, um, because that's just life, right? Yeah. When those things happen, we just fall back on those habits. Um, and so if, if every day you love to work out and you get up early and you're working out, then that can carry us through those difficult times. Does that right. make sense? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I feel a lot of times, you know, if we have good habits installed in us, we also mentor to our children, our children, you know, you know, copy us. And I don't think sometimes parents realize that. And that's why we have 70% of our society comes from dysfunctional families. And the reason for that is because 
we exemplify the behavior of our environment. So when we grew up in a household where there is bad habits installed, maybe yelling and screaming, not being able to communicate well, you know, not being able to do uh, productive things with our children, um, not being able to show love, all these, these habits, you know, and usually they carry from the root cause from their parents and their parents from their parents. But when we start to realize that, you know, um, these certain habits aren't healthy, we could mm -hmm. actually make changes in our life. And then you could have, you could help your children also, because our children start to copy us from a very young age. Just like if you have a little puppy and you bring a puppy into our house, you know, the puppy, if you're lovable to that puppy, that puppy's going to grow up to be a lovable dog. Well, mm -hmm. if you're yelling and screaming and you're not communicating with your child, or you're not showing your child love, and you're not giving your child the right phrase, you know, your child is going to grow up with a lot of different issues. And, you know, so we as parents also have to have responsibility and, and realize that. And, and that's the tough part because sometimes you don't realize because you're so used to living like that your whole entire life. You don't mm -hmm. realize that it's not working, but sometimes we have to like take a step back. And I, I know for myself, there were things in my life that my parents did that I, for a long time, did the same thing. And then I realized, you know, I wasn't happy, that these mm -hmm. things were not good for me. And so I made a conscious effort to go and look for help to help myself get out of those bad habits and to compensate good habits into my life. Because I knew that I did not want certain things that my parents were doing or think the results they were getting. I didn't want that for myself. So I had to change my behavior. I had to change my habits. I had to change how I cope with life and different in and get different strategies. And I think sometimes we have to reach out to others and we have to get help somehow and get yeah. guidance through others. And I, I think one of the things we have to learn is that how do you break those bad habits? If you see that there's not positive things going on in a child's behavior, maybe they 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 lash out very quickly or they they can't handle stress and they just go into anxiety attacks. Obviously, there's a root cause. Now, how do you, you know, is do you have suggestions if you see you you know, cuz sometimes we can see what's wrong with other people, but we can't look at ourselves and see what's wrong with ourselves. <laughs> right, so, you right. know, how do you actually, if you see a child exemplifying behavior that's not positive, you know, what's your suggestions of going in there and maybe seeing what the root cause is and if they have habits that aren't good that could actually improve and actually make their entire life better, what do we do? So like step one, how do we get to the root cause? And step two, what are some ways that we can we can incorporate good habits into our life and start breaking those bad habits? Yeah, great. Um, so it's it's first, as we all know, in anything is uh, identifying it, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that takes a lot for some people to step back and see that, you know, we as a parent might have been the cause for this habit happening. You know, like um, like let's let's go to a rudimentary skill of like getting ready to get out to to school in the morning. Um, and you feel like I'm always chasing my kids around, you know, mm -hmm. and nobody's ready on time and we're running out the door at the last minute. Um, and, you know, we can, we can partially blame that on our children. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, <laughs> like you had mentioned over and over again, it's how they were brought up. Right. And so a lot of it comes back to our behavior and what we exemplify. Um, and if, you know, we're up and we're moving and we have this, this routine set, um, th then it's usually a pretty successful head out the door, you know, and, and, and everything's going smoothly. So it's identifying that, um, Hey, we, we have something we need to correct. And, yeah. and I get it as parents, we are, we are swamped. We, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it's, you can barely keep your head above water, yeah. but it's, it's, um, sit some, take some time, um, or when you're driving, you know, and you have alone time to think about how can I change this? And first it's identification Two, lots of good resources out there, but it's about how do we mar start making these habits happen? Well, we don't change the world all at once. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And anyone will tell you if you want to like start a diet and you want to lose some weight, 
it, it's rarely successful to say, I'm not going to eat bad food anymore. I'm not going to this, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to, you know, no sugar, da, da, da. That's rarely successful for a lot of people. Now we all are built different. I'm a cold Turkey type of person that like I say, you know, no sugar, but I don't do it. I don't do no sugar, no, this, no, that, no, I, you take it step at a time. Right. And so that's how we have to work with our children is to say, and they don't need to to know that we're doing this. It can be behind the scenes, depending on their age. But if they're older, you want to have that conversation. Say, here's what I'm noticing. Let's work on this together. Yeah. That way the child doesn't feel overwhelmed. But, you know, if they're still in elementary school and and we all know our children better than anyone, and it's about, you know, that maybe getting on the school bus at, uh, for that five-year-old. Okay, well, we don't need to talk to them so much about it, but we need to set a structure yeah. And so it's make one change at a time, right. um, make one adjustment. Maybe we get up five minutes earlier, not a half hour earlier, or, yeah. you know, and, and I know many parents are probably going, I can't do that. Well, you, we can. Um, and if we just take baby steps, right. Yeah. Um, you don't eat the elephant all at once. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to take baby steps. And so it's kind of um, taking that step back. And if you have a significant person in your life or a spouse, um, then have that conversation with them, if they can contribute and help you kind of say, well, here's what we've done, or, or here's what I know and get some books. Yeah. Um, but really, it's about stepping back, assessing the situation. And I'm not saying deep dive. I'm just saying, you know, think about it a little bit more when you're on your drive home. What yeah. can I do? What's that one thing I can change? Maybe we lay out their clothes the night before. Right. That's a great habit. That's a tremendous habit. Something that I had with our kids, we did. Now our kids uh, were in the a private school. So there were uniforms. So yeah. it was a little bit easier, but as they got older, yeah. uh, you know, there was that habit that we instilled, put your clothes out the night before. And I I've seen some things where parents have the routine where they set up the clothes for the whole week, mm -hmm. you know, but here's the important part. And this is uh, what, as I just said it, I'm like, this is an important piece because the parents don't set it up. Yeah. The children let the children, because the sooner we can help our children start making decisions on their own. Yeah. And yes, they may go to school with a striped shirt and plaid pants. It's not <laughs> the end of the world, right? right. But they're feeling, they're building that confidence and they're gaining independence. And it's about them making that. Yeah. It's not a life changing decision. Right. It's what clothes you wear, you know? And so sometimes I, I reflect back as I talk to this, share this is my daughter would see pictures and she'd be like, why did you let me wear that? What did you dress me? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it was a choice. I didn't, I wasn't in charge of your clothes. You could, you, I let you pick out your clothes. You got yourself dressed for the day and that helped her feel, you know, a little bit more independent. And so your socks didn't match. It's not the end of the world for me. Did yeah. we go out in public like that? Probably not. I mean, I did have some, you know, some guidelines like, yeah, no, we have to look kind of put together when we head out in public, but around yeah. the house, you wear what you want. You know what right. I mean? And so it's, yeah, it's first off, number one would be making that assessment, identifying that we can make a change Two, um, maybe having that discussion of how are we going to do that? And three little bits, just bite-sized chunks, and then we can move forward and help them be successful. And I think when we do it like that, and when, and this is another point that they, uh, that people might not think about is when we talk about that change, yeah, how long do you give? Like, how long do we set the time that it's five minutes earlier? Well, kind of depends on the child, you, the situation, but give it a week. And yeah. then maybe the next week could go a little bit deeper and make another change or get maybe even two to three weeks or maybe a month. Yeah. You decide. I think it's um, nothing's going to work well on these kind of fronts um, when we make changes if we don't have that buy-in personally, mm -hmm. right? Does that make right. sense? Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think, yeah. You, and I think you made a good point. It's baby steps, you know, mm -hmm. little by little, you know, and I think it's really important that we, you know, and we, us as parents, we have to really look at ourselves too, take a step back and, you know, and, you know, and sometimes look at, look at the behaviors. It's when we start to see negative behaviors in our children, we need to start taking a little bit of a responsibility and think, okay, what is leading to these behaviors? Mm -hmm. And it could be something that's going on in school. 
It could be some other, you know, maybe conflicts with some kids in school that they're not getting along with, or it could be some things at home, but we, we need to try to find the root cause. Mm -hmm. And, you know, usually when children are acting, you know, acting out or their behavior is not good, or maybe they're not getting good grades and it's not because they're struggling, understanding the work, it could be other things too. Oh you know, gosh. But, yes. So yes. we, we need to find the root causes. So as parents, I think we have to take responsibility as soon as we see thing behaviors not um that are not positive we need to start digging in and figuring out why and once right. we figure out why if it does have to do with the parents when well, then we need to take a little responsibility yeah and that's hard I'm, to do yeah yeah it is hard to do and I, I noticed when I was in school when my children you know some of them were having difficulty in learning you know I I went in there and I had a, a long discussion with the teachers and the faculty and we figured out what the problems were and then they had solutions and mm -hmm. I was very compliant because I yeah. thought they were great solutions. Yeah. And they were shocked, you know, because they said most parents are in denial. So when they see their children exemplifying negative behavior, they immediately get very defensive and, oh, no, 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 not my child. Oh, no, 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 not my child. Even though that child is exemplifying those negative behaviors right in front of them, mm -hmm. they, they don't want to admit that there is a problem. And that, yep. I think, a, a yeah. huge thing is that. We have to, when we see behaviors that are not positive, we have to, you know, get out of that denial stage and admit that there is a problem and accept that. Yeah. You, you, uh, so many ideas went off in my head when you were saying a few things there and in one was, yeah, it's, um, it's our reflection and in, in like going into the school and having that conversation. And, you know, um, my husband and I talk about this at length sometimes where, how in in prior years and generations, you know, the teacher was always backed by the parent, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the, the teachers were there, and I still believe this in 90% in of the cases today, the, the teachers are there because they love kids and they want yeah. to help kids. And, but our society has gotten a little tainted um, in that, you know, the, oftentimes the parents come in saying the teachers are wrong and it's not my child's fault. It's not my, they, we, we lack to take ownership many times as, yeah. as parents. And it really falls on us a lot. Is there yeah. a lot, is there a few teachers out there who are, are you know, a little off? Absolutely. Um, we all know that to be the case, but <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's backing up. It's, it's working together as a team. And, and you took that initiative. You didn't go in and accuse, right? Right. You said, Hey, what do we, what do we have to do? How can I be a, a positive influence in my child? And the teacher often knows what a typical fourth grader should be doing, right. Yes. Um, better than we do as parents sometimes, yes. um, because that's, that's their wheelhouse. That's where they spend all of their day. And yeah. so if they can help us reflect and let's be, you know, being a team about that is important. Um, and yeah, how can we help develop those better habits? And like you said, exemplifying it, we are the leader in our home, right? As the mm -hmm. parents, um, good or bad, sometimes we yeah. are the leader and I'm not saying all of us are perfect no. and, and we don't need to be, but we need to, to make efforts. If, if I, um, lack in a certain area and, this is something I need to work on to be a better parent. Um, I took on the responsibility of being a parent and I want to do the best job I can as everyone out there. I often believe everybody's doing the best they can. Now, some yeah. people argue with me on that, you know, when they see some behaviors, but I'm like, come on, everybody I believe is genuinely trying for the most part to be a better person. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that's something with our kids. So we have to be that, um, that role model. Yeah. And, um, you know, like for me, I've forever, since I've had children, I get up in the morning, I work out and I have that routine and all my kids know that, you know, and yeah. that's that one stable that gets my day going. And right. so they all work out now too, you know, and, yeah. and it's just, and it doesn't have to be an intense thing, but that's a whole other thing too. When we talked about habits, we didn't even both you or nor I discussed it these are the good habits because we know how quick it is and easy it is to pick up a bad habit, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how hard those are to break. Um, and so when we find a good habit and we just build at it slowly, it has just as much benefit as a negative habit can have the negative impact. Exactly. And so, you know, figuring that out um, and finding what gets you excited, what, you know, is good, but these habits really um, become a, a staple in, um, in people's lives. And that's how you can, I, I truly believe people who are successful, who are the CEOs of companies who are driven to perform, who are high performing parents, um, there's habits in there. There are yeah. routines 
excuse me, that carry them through. And, um, you know, I was, I participated in a boot camp here um, where I live and it was just <clears throat> us girls got up and um, guys could come too, but it was mainly women. And we, we would start at 5 a.m., you know, and you'd tell some people that and they're like, oh my God, <laughs> you know, you have to get up at 4.30 to get to the place by five, which isn't unreasonable. And I wanted to do that because then you have to get your workday started. Or you have to get the kids off to school. Yeah. And, um, and she had re she had done some research trying to always encourage us, you know, and she had said they have done um, research and they say like 60% or maybe 70% of um, top performing CEOs um, are up at 4 a.m. and yeah. they're getting their day started while some of us are still sleeping in bed and hate to get up. Yeah. Do I believe that there are morning people and there are evening people? You know, my husband's a night owl and I'm a like get up and go person. So I do know that our circadian rhythms or whatever are different, but um, I think it's an important piece. The the world functions on a eight to five concept. So yeah. you need to get on board with that, I think, to to have success. And, and so getting up and defining those routines and working together as a family in what we do, they're going to do, as we've seen over and over again, if your parents smoked, you're probably going to smoke, right? right. And, mm -hmm. and um, so, yeah, it, it it's, and then as we've always, and I don't know if it's still a saying today, but um, <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And phew, lots of parents would love to be saying that, but we can't, right? Yeah. Because 90% of it's picked up on their modeling what we do. Right. Um, and so I think it's important to, yeah, like you say, just take the bite sized pieces, think about it and walk through it. Right. I, I think that's so important. And I, I think, you know, we, as parents, we're always going to make mistakes and we can't be too harsh on ourselves either. Yes. I've seen yes. so many parents really harsh on themselves for making, you know, as their kids got older, if they, things didn't go right for them, if they made mistakes or, you know, if they had problems later on in life, they took responsibility for that and they felt very guilty but as parents, we can only do the best we can. And sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, it's a learning process and we learn from our mistakes. And then later yeah. on in life, we come to realizations. But, you know, there's always room for change, no matter how old you are. And we can't really, you know, at that time, you know, we just did the best we could, you know, right. that we knew how, you know, right. you know, in the circumstances that we, we lived in the environment we lived in the, the family we grew up in, we did the best we could. And you can't beat yourself over the head, you oh, know, no. as parents, you know, we, we did the best we could because, you know, there is a, a book for, for women, you know, the, what to expect the first 12 months, but there is no book after that, you know? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I, think, I think they've actually made one. I really, really? I, yeah. I've not, I, I, maybe it was a spoof on it, but I'm like, yeah, somebody said, you know, they need to make one for what to expect for your teenagers. Cause we all, <laughs> you know, it's once they get outside of the of the womb and they're in the world, that's when we're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and being the mother of four, um, I'll tell you every single one of them is different. Oh my right? God. Every single, I have three and every single one of them has a completely different personality. So you can't parent. I mean, you can do generalities of parenting yeah. and, and there, cause it has to be structure in the home because right. our kids, our kids, um, thrive on that. The structure yes. I, we know over and over again, they thrive on that. But do you have um, a different, like a couple of my children were night owls, like my husband was, you know, well, it yeah. didn't mean they got to stay up until 10 o'clock at night. Right. I mean, what I, you're in bed and you can choose to, you know, fall asleep or not, but you're going to know come six or seven o'clock, it's time to get up. So you, your body's going to figure that out. Yeah. But yeah. The, yeah. We can't beat ourselves up. That's a very valid point. And um, psh, do I have mistakes I made? Absolutely. Do I wish <laughs> I could redo it? Absolutely. But um, yeah, we have to do the best we can with what we have where we are. Definitely, definitely. And so it's like listening for, you know, families who are listening to your podcast to learn and improve. Yeah. Um, and it, it's, they may not go to head tomorrow and make changes in their life, but maybe at some point they're going to hear it that they say, okay, now's the time I need to make a change. And just being cognizant of it, I think, um, before it's too late, yeah. but yes, do we all make mistakes? And um, absolutely. And, and we can't we waste time 
beating ourselves up. Although I can't say that I haven't been there myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's easier said than done, uh -huh. but um, yeah, to be reflective. And then I think this is an important place too, that, you know, we've noticed in our society is now we're all kind of apart. People, families are in different parts of the world and, yeah. and we don't have that unit to support us. And we don't have grandma there to say, what the heck, what are you still asleep for? Right. Yeah. Or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Right. Um, and, and keep us in check. And right. so sometimes, you know, we're, we're kind of feel like we're on an island. Um, and so, yes, we need to build that community around us and, um, it, and depending how you decide to find that, but look for a positive influence and, um, like-mindedness. Yeah. That's something else I've noticed too, is I'm often shocked that I'm like, people don't think like I do, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, <laughs> That's a big problem in today's world, I think, because, because they, people, if you think a certain way, they expect everybody else to think that way also. And it doesn't work like that. Every individual no. is different. And what works for one person may not work for the next person. Absolutely. But you yeah. cannot just tell someone you have to do it this way. Because no. Yeah. You and yeah. you have to really respect other people's decisions and you yeah. Know, Give and yourself that grace. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we, um, we have our, uh, little leaders, uh, curriculum in our program that we promote and, um, yeah, they're, they're a little bit more than suggestions. Um, but it's about, it's all about building that habit. So we, we introduce a concept at the beginning of the week, the children work on it through the week does it's very organic learning. Yeah. And then at the end, you know, the parents, we say, pick out the ones that you really want to hold on to. Is right. it, you know, having your child, um, you know, make their bed is it having your child set the table. Is it, you know, teaching them to, um, say please. And thank you, whatever that might be. If we don't take the time to teach it. And I know parents are crazy busy and that's why our program is so successful is because it's reminding uh, the parents like, Oh my gosh. Yeah, we, we do need to think about that, um, to help our children be successful. And so we, we really believe that it's about the continual, the baby steps, practicing it, trying it, practice it, and then back up when you have a mistake and try again, exactly. you know, and learn from that way. I think, and I think those habits you just mentioned briefly were very important. I think they really should make develop, help children develop really good characters you know, and characteristics in themselves, because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you sometimes you see children that lack respect that, mm -hmm. that, you know, that are, um, you know, disrespectful towards their elders or, you know, or adults. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, and sometimes I, I, see, I will, I would meet parents in the school stuff. And I say to myself, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, you know? <laughs> right, but, right. But I think it's important, like, you know, you just mentioned a few, like, what are some things that you've seen in people that you really highly suggest that are good habits that people might consider when they start, when they, ha when they have children and, and the children are first born, they're starting to develop and they're starting to become little adults because they grow so quickly. Mm -hmm. What are some of the habits that you think people should take in consideration to focus on that you think makes a huge impact in, in children's lives? Mm, okay. Um, I think a lot of, um, so it, it, when you asked that first question, the first thing that came to my mind was when they're little, you know, from newborn on, and we work with three-year-olds and up, but um, I often would see when we would work with families, um, there, we'd be maybe working with a five-year-old, but then the mom had a little maybe an eight month old or a nine month old and she yeah. was holding them and cute as could be. But then the the little baby would get frustrated and then the baby might start to hit the mom in the face or something. And I, I just demonstrated that that was that sound, but yeah. they might start to smack the mom in the face and, and the mom would, you know, pull the hand down or something, or, or we would see the mom that wouldn't address it. And yeah. I'm like, okay, right there, we're, you're missing an opportunity because you need to let them know it's not okay. And some, the, some of the moms are just like, oh, that's what he does. I'm going to say that's really not okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So um, is it in fun? Are they trying to get your attention? There's a difference there, but yeah. to think about it from that, from as young as, you know, that um, a eye contact I think is huge. And, yeah. and that's a habit that we need to teach them as soon as we start communicating with them, you know, and, and don't let them be distracted and looking away and playing with their toys for a long period of time when you're trying to have a conversation with them, because it's not going to be a long conversation with a three-year-old, right? right. Um, it's, I need you, I need your attention for 30 seconds to convey. And so then we get down to their level. We make eye contact with them. And so uh, those are characteristics and, and habits we want to teach that eye contact's important. 
You look at the person when you're talking to them, right? Yeah. Um, and then in the routine at bedtime and, and in the morning when you get up, after yeah. you're done at the table, our children are truly capable of taking their plate to the kitchen sink Mm-hmm. And and then a not only does that help you out as mom, it yeah. teaches them independence, which is what we want them to get to. We don't yes. want them to be relying on us. And some parents will be like, "I always want them to be a part." I get that, but it's not healthy, right? Yeah. And and it's whatever they they can cap- be capable of doing. We want to encourage that. Yeah. Because a it it gets them to that point where they're more confident, and then they're going to be more successful in school. Because when you send a, a confident child off to school, they're not going to get bullied, right? right? Mm-hmm. They're going to have better success in academics because they're paying attention in the classroom. They know they need to be looking at their teacher when the teacher is talking yeah. and they know they need to be respectful. And so they need to sit in their seat and be patient, right? And wait right. their turn. So it's teaching them how to take turns. It's teaching them, you know, to make that eye contact. Um, and to, and to follow up with, like I said, take your plate to the kitchen sink. It's not that hard. They're going to spill it once in a while, Yeah, but that's part of the learning when we, you know, when we first get our big, big person job, we don't do everything right. Right. Um, we might send off an email that was totally, you know, offset or inappropriate or whatever it might be. Yeah. You know, that's how you learn. And I think it's just having that mindset of, um, you know, whatever is important in your household um, is is good. And I, b- I believe keeping, um, we, we have one of the skill sets we talk about, respect. It is not just about respect for people. It's about respect for our property. Yeah. We have seen over and over again where, you know, uh, the kids would come in and they would be sitting at the table and um, it doesn't really matter what age, but you don't take a pencil and bang it on the table, right? Right we need to interject there and say, you know what, the pencils are for writing. And if we need to hit something, then we're going to get a hammer and something. I don't know, you know, whatever it might be as appropriate at the time, but we need to respect the property, which then we overflow it to, yes, we do need to take care of our room because that's the, the things that showed up in your room as a child, your parents had to pay for. Exactly. Right? Or someone did. Yeah. And so, no, it's not okay to keep it messy because that's a bit disrespectful. Yeah. And so we, we want them to learn that our things are, are, are valuable because they don't, they're not easily replaced in some situation. Right. Exactly. Um, and as well as people are valuable. So we have to respect all that. And I think sometimes that gets lost mm-hmm. over the years. Um, so does that answer your question that, you know, we, we, we can start young and it's those simple yeah. things that we miss. And if we, if we miss it, it just continues to escalate. And then we, we have bigger problems because when we have a 12 year old who's hitting someone because they're angry or frustrated, unacceptable. Right. And then that gets, that gets them in trouble. And they're like, what the heck happened? All of a sudden I'm here because you really, that's how it feels. Like all of a sudden you're landing there at nine or 12 years old. And you're like, the kid doesn't know that, oh, this isn't okay. And you're like, they should know that it's okay. Well, yeah. Maybe they don't, you know? Maybe they don't, exactly. And I see that in in, in today's younger generation that they they don't really discipline as much and they don't really ground the rules. And, and they, they kind of, the, the kids I see in a lot of families, you know, that I, I've had interactions with that the kids are taking over and mm-hmm. parents yeah. are just letting them do, you know, whatever. And, you know, and they may, they may say something to them, but there's no, there's no consequence. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what, now you got a week, we're going to take away your device or we're going to, mm-hmm. we're going to, you, you can't have access to this, you know, and there's, you know, they just may say that's not right or that, 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 but there's no, there's no consequence. There's no, there's no, you know, because when, when you, when you, when you do something wrong and you know, you're corrected and you're just like, that's wrong. You need to be doing this and mm-hmm. do it again. You know, we're, you're, you're not going to be able to use your iPad for a week. Let's say. Yeah. And not, not only consequences, like you say, but an explanation. An and explanation. I don't say like a, an adult explanation, but you know, hitting is on a, hitting is not okay. So it's, yeah. see like they're unacceptable. I mean, I might've right. said that. So your kids pick up on those good words over time too, you know, yeah. grammatically, but hitting is not okay. Right. And here's why. 
Right. Because you wouldn't, you know, and you walk through the the whys just briefly yeah. because after a while they go, wah, 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 you know, we're droning. Um, and, and that's not good either. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this, this, as soon as you start to see the behavior that's kind of, uh, you, we believe is inappropriate or not for their benefit or for no benefit. Yeah. Um, we need, we as responsible parents really need to interject as soon as we can. Do I empathize with parents who are, both parents are working sometimes, and it's hard. I mean, our economy right now is, is tough and they, yeah. and everybody still struggles to keep up with the Joneses and, or you have a house payment that's stressing you out. Yeah. Last thing you want to worry about is your child not doing well in school or building a habit. I right. get that, you know, and, yeah. and this is just information for those who are ready to receive it and, or um, maybe down the line. But um, yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot going on and um, you know, it used to be back in the day and and you'll probably hear this because I know I've heard it traditional times where, you know, mom stayed home or whatever, and she had the luxury to help her children. That's not always the case. We, it is what it is. You can parent, you know, families sometimes can live on one income and they just choose not to, and that's okay. I'm, there's no judgment. I'm not saying that at all. But if you if you're both working outside of the home and and struggling to make it work, do I get that this is really hard? Yes. Um, and but you y- you need to be cognizant of it. And at least what we're trying to do is help give you some tips and ideas um, to break it down because the resources might not be there for you to know what you need to do. And listening to this podcast might give you a little insight as opposed to reading a whole book. Yes, <laughs> you know exactly. what I mean? Or yeah. Or but yeah, if we can help. Um, give some insights and guidance um, to learn from our mistakes, right, Stacy? Because yes. we've been there and yeah. and um, having that experience guide kind of say, oh, this, take a minute and step back or think about it this way is is really what we want to make sure we do. And and we're all on the same page. Our, I mean, our mission here at Karam's Little Leaders is about, you know, changing that next generation and helping them be more successful and, and whatever that might be. And, and that we get everybody's at a different place in this world. Um, and it might be a little bit of improvement in your world yeah. that makes a big difference, or it might be somebody who has a different experience and it's a huge improvement. Um, but our goal is to really just to help everybody um, make our next generation be better than ours, because that's what yeah. we want our legacy to be is that we're, you know, we're moving this world forward. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, if you had to take today's this this uh, this um, this discussion, and you wanted to emphasize some important takeaways, what would be some of the things that you would like to emphasize to the listeners that you really want them to keep in mind when it comes to breaking bad habits and creating good habits and helping your children elevate and and be successful in life? Sure, I would say look inward first. Um, and assess where you where you are personally with your habits and in your behaviors that are consistent, um, and then how to impact our children um, would be yeah. So what can we do? And remember remember to take baby steps. Yeah. Um, and you can't change the world overnight. And um, and and remember too that every child is different. Do I believe? I do. I want to make sure that they understand that. Um, when I say that, that, oh, there's no way he's going to follow the rules. That's not an acceptable answer, but yeah. just know you might have to approach it differently. You yeah. might have to set a different standard up, um, you know, and, and something that works and um, in every household is different. So be patient with yourself, be patient with them, but do be persistent yeah. because it's the persistency, um, persistency. That's not a word. It's the, <laughs> it's good enough the, for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's the persistence um, that will help them be successful and, and will help you be successful. And, you know, there's not a parent out there who doesn't want their child to do well in my mind. Um, and so if, if you take that little extra time um, and I know you don't have time, I know we hear that over and over again, but if you just thinking about it right before you go to bed or when you're driving the car, when you have that moment in time to think about it, just think about it and make those little little changes. And I think, um, over time, you're going to see good results. Um, and those habits can be built and they last your child a lifetime. Right. And we only want the good habits, leave the bad habits out. 
<laughs> and, and you know what too is that you made me think about this when you were when you were given some really good tips right now is that you've talked about praise and rewards you know in your previous podcast mm, yeah and you know when you're breaking bad habits maybe we could incorporate what do you think some rewards Absolutely. or some praise so that so they can keep exemplifying wow you know what I broke this bad habit I did I changed and I did it differently and look mom and dad are really happy and absolutely you know, maybe a parent can think about rewarding them somehow or give them yeah. some type of praise so they yes keep, you know keep doing it and keep repeating those good behaviors yeah no that's a good point thank you for bringing that up stacy yes it's about yeah um recognizing and identifying and praising them for the effort um and not so much the outcome initially because nobody's going to change overnight right yes. <clears throat> and when we can take that time and we see a little bit of effort like maybe this time they didn't you know they went ahead and put their shoes away today but the next day they didn't put their shoes away where they were supposed to well it's okay we just give a gentle reminder and we said but you know what yesterday you did great so i know you're going to get back on track and, yes. and things like that and um yeah and absolute reward now there's this whole controversy over reward for like, you know, is there a graduation every year at kindergarten? Well, I don't know. And do we got every kid gets a trophy? That's not yeah. what we're going for here. That's not the conversation. It's more about, yeah, I just, and it's verbal praise is so powerful for our kids. They don't need a new iPad. They don't need you to take them to McDonald's. If yeah. that's what you like to do, I guess that's okay. But what they really, really crave is the verbal praise, your approval in your um, encouragement. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, the design is really simple. Right. It doesn't cost you any extra money to do this. Um, yeah. it, it, it can take a little more time and a little more thought, yes. but the, um, the outcomes, the rewards, um, and not to use that term too loosely are, are um, monumental. Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, if people wanted to learn more about your programs, what kind of services and programs do you offer to people? Oh, okay. Yeah. So what our program is designed is to be a one year curriculum of basically um, they, the children participate through watching a video. It's a short animated video. And then we give them a mission is what we call it, which is a task for the week. And so like some of the things we talked about already, so make your bed for the week, you know, and so they, they work on that task through the week. Is it going to be perfect? No, but it's a skill set that, that our animated character, Black Belt Bruce says, Hey kids, let's do this. And it's fun. And he makes it yeah. fun. And we make it fun through the way our curriculums design and our programs design. And, and so then at the end, they, they, you know, they get the reward and it's a little token reward, but it's about um, building the parents. And, and what's so awesome about it is we often see is when the kids are doing these exercises and the missions for the week, then the parents start picking them up and they participate with them. And we want that to be something that they can do as a family. So it's a family program, um, for lack of a better word, uh, to help build your children up to be, you know, leaders and it develops their character. And so when we work with their children, our program works from three to nine year olds. Yeah. And so let's get them when they're young, because what we've talked about this before too, they're sponges, yeah. right? This is when they want to learn all that new and fun and good stuff. And that's when we want to be filling up that bucket with yeah. all that good stuff. And so that way, when they're moving forward, they're good to go. So yeah, it's critical to start young. We can't forget that. And um, yeah, let's remember that a three-year-old is very capable of doing a lot more than we give them uh, credit for. And so challenge them a little bit. And where can people find you? Um, they can go to Karam's Little Leaders, which is a little harder to spell, um, dot com or blackbeltbruce.com. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all the social media, YouTube. So we're out there. But yeah, check us out. And if they have any questions, they can, yeah, just uh, blackbeltbruce.com. And they can email us if they want. Some people don't email, but if you can, it's at bruce at blackbeltbruce.com. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, and I also wanted to know, do you have anything that you give away if they start with you or before they start? Do you have anything that you offer to to people? Yeah, well, we are offering like a summer special. Um, and so they can get in for three months. Um, every school is a little different, but uh, the summers tend to be about three months. And so then we're offering a special. And if they um, join now, we have a couple of different things. They can get a, a complimentary book. Um, and then we have a, a stuffed animal, a Black Belt Bruce character stuffed animal, and he's super cute. <laughs> um, so there's a couple of different things they can do. But yeah, we're trying to, we're doing this three month promotion in the summer this year. And uh, 
um, it's a great opportunity for them to give us a try and, and check us out. Wonderful. I'm going to put that in the description. So everybody has that uh, information, but this has been great. Thank you so much, Audra. I I really enjoy this. I think all the podcasts that you you've done and you've done with your husband have been so beneficial because you give a lot of great advice and not only, you you know, it, it, it it really helps parents to open their eyes and to learn different techniques because as parents, we're always one, we always need to learn. We always, you know, because we tend to make a lot of mistakes and we always, tend not to know all the answers. Nobody on this planet is perfect and nobody has all the answers to everything. But sometimes when we have suggestions and we see other, other suggestions, you know, the light bulb goes off Mm -hmm. and it's like, wow, I didn't think of that, you know, and you can use it in your own, in your own life, in your own family. And if it works really positively, that's a great thing because even if if it works really positively and it works for your child, and it causes positive behavior, you know, that child might use it on their child, you know, and, mm-hmm. and these are great things that could be actually transitioned from generation to the generation to the generation. So yeah. it's really worth checking into and to look Absolutely. into. And I, I really commend you for doing this because we, we yeah. need more classes like this, you know, and parents do need help because it is very difficult being a parent. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of the topics that we have, um, we focus on, we used to teach um, in our martial arts school. And, you know, it's so it's like focus, it's discipline, it's respect, courtesy, teamwork, leadership, you know, those are those are skill sets that we need. And if we if oftentimes we know if if we have parents, it's not a flag's not raised in front of us to say, hey, you need to be working on this. Yeah. Then then we often don't. And so um, I think the the way we have built out our program, um, it's so easy, user friendly. You can do it in less than 10 minutes a week um, and you can start these skills happening in your in your family right away. And so, yeah. And Stacy has I think we've given you some some specials, um, pricing Mm -hmm. specials. And so I'll make sure to share that with you too off air and then we can put those up. But yeah, it's yeah. it's really affordable. So if they go to the website, um, do know that there is a coupon code we'll, we'll share with you and you can use that too then. All right. This is awesome. Well, thank you thank so you. much, Audra, for being on the show. I really enjoyed this session. And Audra also has her own podcast on our series and she is part of our podcast team. So she comes on regularly and does podcasts with us. And she has all these different topics about children and, and how, you know, different ways that you can incorporate different good habits and different things into children's lives that can make a huge difference overall. So, you know, thank you everybody for listening and Audra will be back soon. So keep an eye for her because she'll be back to help us with some other suggestions and other tools and techniques and strategies. So thank you so much, Audra, for coming on. I really thank you, Stacey. Always good. See you. See you too. Bye-bye. Bye.